Today on Earth Focus, Jeremy Monroe shares his upcoming film on Oregon's Willamette River, coming up on Earth Focus. The water starts out some of the purest water on Earth, crystal clear, cold. We have some of the best water quality coming out of the ground in the world. That's the type of water that we start with in our headwaters. The question is, as it goes downstream, what are we doing to that? I guess the main motivation for this film was to sort of shine a light on this movement, this national movement to restore rivers. And we're doing that through the lens of the Willamette River in Oregon. So the Willamette River system is a big river system in Western Oregon, and I think of it as Oregon's big river because it really flows through our biggest cities and our richest farmland. I think in Oregon and nationwide, there's still a question in people's mind, what, what's the value of a river? And what we've just gone through a couple centuries of kind of disconnecting ourselves from rivers, and we're in the process of sort of getting back to that. So my main motivation for this film was to really shine a light on what's really a national movement to reconnect to our rivers and to begin to restore them. I hope that people will see in this film um, lots of examples of how you can sort of identify yourself as living in a watershed and living in, in a community of people that are connected by water. The choices that we all make in our different parts of that watershed affect each and every person. We are so lucky in Portland to have the Willamette River. I mean, we're the bridge city. We have so many bridges and people cross them to go downtown. And um, I bet a lot of people don't even look down to see that the river is even still there. Now in Portland, the Willamette River has a really bad reputation, especially among young people, because all the things that they've heard about the river, the river's really dirty, don't touch it, there's sewage in there, and what they don't realize is the amount of work that's been done on the river um, and the accomplishments that have been made in decreasing pollution. We're doing a great job, um, but obviously we're not done yet. It's not gonna be fixed in five years or 10 years or 15 years. It's a multi-generational effort. You know, looking at it as a community and as a community of neighbors, um, nobody likes a bad neighbor. <laughs> so I think that it, knowing that um, all of your neighbors are doing good things for the river also encourages you to start doing good things for the river as well. I think that we're all interacting with the people that were here before us. We're interacting with history and we're also interacting with the future of the river. That community of people that are actively doing the work right now to restore the Willamette River are certainly a minority, but relative to most other places you'll go, it's a remarkable amount of people and labor force and time, effort, and money is really going into this river system. In the 1990s, a measure was passed to dedicate some of the state's lottery funds to watershed and salmon restoration. And that really became the sort of seed for all these grassroots level organizations to pop up in almost every medium or even small sized watershed, there's a paid group of people with a budget doing projects to restore the river, to restore habitat. And that's not something you find everywhere. You will find watershed groups all over the country, but not as active and um, I guess resourced as, as the organizations in Oregon. We've been through over a hundred years of removing wood out of streams. It takes big measures to, to restore things that have changed so much. Large wood basically is a, is a roughness element in a river. It interrupts flow and creates hydraulic complexity. And when you get hydraulic complexity, you get habitat complexity. You know, things like pools, side channels, gravel bars, eddies, backwater areas. And you need that complexity to support healthy, diverse aquatic communities.
for this project, we used a couple different methods. We pulled trees over um, with a yarder, big trees. Those pieces kind of acted as an anchor piece, and then we would bring additional pieces in with a helicopter to create kind of a, a log complex or a log jam. This is all new gravel in here. Near end walking up the channel and, and seeing a, a red, a Chinook red, you know, right below your, your project wood, knowing that that gravel was only there because you placed that wood is, is, is pretty special. We value things most after we lose them. And in a lot of our rivers, and especially a lot of our big rivers, we've lost a lot. And so the last couple generations, I think, are some of the first to really carry a consciousness of we can destroy things, we can destroy river systems. With that consciousness is, I hope, a desire to want to heal and to want to make amends to those river systems. As long as we still have salmon, that want to come back, and as long as we have those crystal clear headwaters, we have sort of chances to make things better. Those things haven't given up on us yet. The choices that we all make in our different parts of that watershed affect each and every person. And so there's a generation growing up in Oregon right now, and actually across the nation, that gets opportunities to be part of these projects that's going to have a different worldview. I think what's happening in Oregon right now and some of the things that we're highlighting in the film is really one model to start to get us back to a more river conscious living. Airwaves, a global channel of uncompromising stories. World news, documentaries, entertainment, and culture. Link TV, connecting you to the world. For more information, visit linktv.org.